Well, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Erie County Board of Elections is now called to order. Roll call, please. Mr. Bale. Here. Mr. Copeland. Here. Mr. Drexel. Here. Mrs. Showerman. Here. Mr. Scutella. Here. Mr. Winarski. Chairman Horton. Here. 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 Uh, hearing of the public, are there any citizens desiring to be heard in present or online? Any citizens desiring to be heard? Anyone online? Seeing none, I'll call for entertain a motion for the approval of the uh, minutes from our previous 3 12 24 special meeting. So Second. Probably move the second. Any discussion about any of the items? Call for the question. Mr. Copeland? Yes. Mr. Drexel? Yes. Mr. Showerman? Yes. Mr. Scatella? Yes. Mr. Winarski? Yes. Mr. Bale? Yes. Chairman Horton? Yes. Uh, we'll call for the entertainment. We'll receive the election report at this time. Okay. Well, we had, I think we had a great election experience for the primary. Uh, we Our turnout was just about 25%. Uh, as far as internally, we had our uh, regular staff. And in addition to that, we had 984 workers. Um, the, the election, it looks like the estimated cost of the election to, to us was $279,562.06. Of that, $202,168 $202, was um, going from the election integrity grant and $77,393 uh, is, is being paid by the county. So we were using good, making good use of those funds. Um, don't have too much to report from that. We're I think that everything went really uh, very smoothly out in uh, all, of, all of our polling sites. I think internally, everything just uh, can't really say enough. And Tanya has it very well organized and um, it's running running well over there. And I think Tanya has some comments to you. Yeah, so um, to ensure the integrity of the election, our team completed a robust and detailed reconciliation <laughs> process for our 149 polling sites. This includes comparing the number of ballots cast with the number of votes voters signed in at each poll. During this process, we also made sure that every provisional ballot cast at the polls was accounted for. We had 105 provisional ballots that were determined to be fully counted. 20 provisional ballots were partially counted and 31 were rejected due to voter voter not being registered or being registered with another party affiliation. In accordance with the Pennsylvania Election Code, we also conducted a 2% statistical sample. We recounted the election day ballots cast in Erie 519, Lake City Borough, and Fairview District 3. The results from the recount matched the votes cast on election day. Following our Act 88 election integrity grant requirements, we have submitted those results to the Pennsylvania Department of State. We participated in the statewide risk limiting audit by submitting our ballot manifest and candidate totals by batch. However, Erie County was not chosen to hand tally any batches for this election. Our team has been diligent in our pre and post election processes, verifying that the results you are certifying today are true and correct. Any comments from our vice chair or any other members of the board? I'll just say thank you again for all your hard work. And uh, once again, you did a fantastic job. And thank you one all. I don't know if you guys had a chance to explore the new software for election reporting night. I thought that was pretty exciting as well. 
Uh, there's a lot of ways to look at the data on that site, whether it's on your phone or on the desktop, but there's lots of different export reports that you can do, uh, different ways that you can visualize the outcome of those results. And I should mention, as far as our mail-in ballots, we had uh, from the Democratic Party, we had 15,237 requested and um, returned. We had 12,684 and on the Republican side, we had 4,672 requested and returned 3,504. So there's still quite a difference in, in those behaviors. And we're looking at what that means to us really is making sure that all of our procedures and everything is, uh, there's no bias to either party that we're looking at those figures. We're looking that there are differences in behaviors and that we're accommodating all of that. Great. Yeah, there's yeah. I can't say enough about the process uh, coming back here to the courthouse. I mean, we've seen steady improvement there and the people, the, the judges and stuff, whoever's bringing back uh, all their equipment, the compliments and just their nature leaving the courthouse. That, I mean, is with a smile on their face every time they, they walk through the door. We were out there and, and greeted a lot of them. I know that uh, Ellen did that for a while and maybe those experiences weren't quite as, uh, <laughs> as fun. <laughs> I will say that the way we do it now, and especially how it is out front, that is very more effective and faster, a whole lot faster than in tracing all through the, the courthouse. You know, huge you improvement. <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, you did. That, that was the you worst did. part of election night when you were judge, is you'd be here an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the way we're paying them now, is so much better and safer for everyone involved. Um, and the whole process is streamlined. It's very, <laughs> very, very, very radically different from what it used to be. Yes. In, in a very, very good way. You know, um, the general public sometimes can find a lot of stuff to complain about, even so some of those 970 workers that, uh, that we employed and deployed on that day. Uh, and generally, uh, I've heard nothing but good, good, good things. Inevitably, I always hear one or two or three, but this time, this last time, uh, we just talk about behaviors. We seem to have modified not only the behavior internally, but externally as well, because I didn't hear a single complaint. I didn't, see, I didn't, hear, I didn't hear a single grum, rumble, <laughs> you know. And that's a credit to the staff. That's a credit to the constant refining of the process. And Hopefully, you know, while we continue to do great things, we'll look at little tiny pieces that we can improve a little bit more, but I don't, I don't know how much closer we can get to perfection the way you guys are already doing out there. So I appreciate it. Well, I always pray. Yeah. Yeah, I always <laughs> pray that you all are uh, indeed the gold standard in the Commonwealth. Uh, and it should also be a testament to this board uh, for uh, giving you the tools to do to better accomplish your job. Mm -hmm. And we're grateful. Uh, for the Biden administration in the, in the Commonwealth for allowing us to have these integrity, uh, election integrity grants so that we can em employ uh, all of the things that are going into making that such a seamless transition. We're very, very grateful. Everybody has said for the election office, and, and I need to that, seeing these people that work 14 hours a day at night with the smile on their face, friendly, and um, it's nice to see. That's why I get a little cranky about it that somebody goes after the, the election office to the point where I can get into trouble. But they do it again, I'm going to say it again. And if you could do a favor, Asbury Nature Center, can you reach out to the, to the judge of elections and see if there was any complaints because the nature center, you park down there and then they have the emergency circle up there and see if there was any complaints because last general election there was quite a few complaints with senior people having to walk that far. And the one I saw, one uh, elderly lady was pushing her husband in a wheelchair through that gravel. And if there was any complaints, Maybe we can get some temporary handicaps up there for election day. And uh, I, I know that's an emergency type thing, but we're going to voters. And uh, 
if there was complaints to that effect, maybe we can do that on election day. I will say we do have a an a live health center too. So during the day, all day on election day, we have people uh, answering phone calls and text messages on our, our live center. So anybody from the poll sites, any of the judges, um, anybody can be calling in. We've had voters call in. Uh, so as far as manning that and having someone dispatched to a site, if there's any issues whatsoever, whether it's a technical issue or if there's a, a misunderstanding about a parking place or if there's a misunderstanding about a campaign sign, anything. We're ready, we're on the spot, and we're going out and making sure those are resolved. And, and I'm not aware of any of those incidents, but- And, and maybe this primary, they let them park there, but the year before I was there and I heard the complaint. Right, yep. We, and we always want to be improving that process. Well, we, we like voter preference, and you know, we may put to their disposal a number of ways that they can cast their vote mm -hmm. and stuff. And I know people like to go to the polls for the, you know, there are other ways to see. So we'll continue to try to improve on that. Uh, it's sad to say. And the last thing I want to say, uh, particularly to Mr. Fernandez, is you, when you read that report, you sounded like you miscounted your votes by hand. <laughs> <laughs> and that you said, here he wasn't picked. And uh, I can tell you, uh, we had that experience of counting those votes by hand. <laughs> we just got lucky. <laughs> we got lucky. So I wasn't uh, here for the any other election prize in this. It, well, it was such a well-oiled machine watching every the whole process. I was it was it was so much tighter and cleaner than I expected, especially having all those people involved for like a one-day event like that. So um and it was impressive. So I'm very happy to be part of it. Yes, we're pat we're very happy to have you as our board too, and the, we have a great engagement from the community. But we we like working with the board because you've been trusting of any changes that we uh, had to make, uh, any equipment that we've asked for, and we've justified. And you guys have been very nice to work with, and the end result is this is better for the the voters. It's better for the people working that day. So we appreciate your support. Okay, let's take care of this last little okay. bit of business and new business. Uh, uh, approval of purchase of two stackers for the Adil San Falcon team election mail sorting and processing system from Runbeck Election Services Incorporated. Uh, I'll entertain the motion for that. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion on it? Any comments on it? This is um, an enhancement for our current stacker and sorter machine. And these extra bins will allow us to add uh, a sorting mechanism so we can sort by district as well. Um, so currently, if we, we had to do a recount in the fall election, and there were maybe two or 3,000 voters only that were in that uh, race, but we had to to um, rescan over 20,000 ballots because we couldn't separate by district or municipality. So this is giving us an opportunity on the front end to be able to sort those. Um, and that'll be a lot more streamlined and uh, that should be covered by the election integrity grant as well. So there's not going to be a cost incurred by the county for that. Call for a question. Okay, Mr. Drexel. Yes. Mr. Showerman. Yes. Mr. Scatella. Yes. Mr. Winarski. Yes. Mr. Bale. Yes. Mr. Copeland. Yes. Chairman Horton. Yes. Item D under new business. Possible certification of 2024 Erie County general primary election results. I'll entertain that motion as well. So moved. Second. And properly moved and seconded. Councilman Scatella and Councilwoman Showerman. Any discussion? Could you bring that over here for us this time? Yes, the past I have been, what we have that. Yes. So upon uh upon uh, adopting this, I'll go ahead and sign it. We'll, after it's adopted, we'll send this around because we're gonna move pretty rapidly into the uh, personnel finance. We have the finance so discretion. Uh call for the question. Mr. Showerman, yes, Mr. Scatella, yes, Mr. Winarski, yes, Mr. Bale, yes, Mr. Copeland, yes, Mr. Dressel, yes, Chairman Horton, yes. Okay, we all pretty much made our comments. Uh 
Uh, but are there any questions or any further comments from the board? Yeah. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting. I'm sure most of you guys saw Kyle's email yesterday advocating for some drop boxes. Uh, you know, it was funny that it came up because it's an issue that I've cared about for a long time that uh, having only one drop box throughout the entire county is a little bit of honors to people, particularly, you know, out in your district. I, I've measured up on Google Maps, the furthest corner of the county is 58 minutes to the city. And, you know, when we have 127 voting locations that we believe that access to voting is, should be easy, um, I have for a long time wondered if we should have more drop boxes. When um, uh, Allegheny just added, I think, seven. Maybe, maybe it wasn't that big. They added a few. And uh, I thought, man, it'd be kind of nice if we could do that. Yesterday, I was talking with Karen about uh, election integrity grant, our funds that are left, and what we're going to spend it on. And I thought, hey, this is probably a good time to talk about it. And then Kyle ended up sending a, a letter to us advocating for additional drop boxes. And, I just think that when we have people in Union City, Corey, Albion, uh, Fairview, making it more accessible to them, I don't, I don't know how many, I don't know how we've implemented it. It'd be, I, I was talking with Tony and Karen, it, it's a concern. We'd have to worry about the logistics of retrieving. We have to worry about security. We have to worry about the cameras and such. But uh, I, I don't know that those are barriers that are so high that we should not entertain the issue. So I just wanted to bring up. For discussion if you guys because some of you guys care to explore uh either this year or in the future i don't know i just think making it easier for people to get their ballots back is a I, good thing i do you know they're going to be looking at that at the state level um because of ballot stuffing um and being it's the election board that's responsible for that right and making sure that doesn't happen the cameras have to be on and there's no way to ensure that that doesn't happen right now. And they are advising counties not to put more up till they know what's going to happen with that. At, at the state level. Okay. Uh, like about, the Secretary of State's office, or who specifically at the state level is? Just at a meeting I was at. Oh, okay. Yeah, let, uh, let me uh, say election this. reform. I'm sorry. Let me say this. Erie, Erie County was the first uh, place in the Commonwealth to put out a drop box. You may have or may not have known that. Uh, at that time, we had discussion about multiple drop boxes. And it was the first opportunity to do so. And it was a bunch of state litigation throughout the Commonwealth about it. The election board here elected not to at that time. Uh, I was always a strong advocate. Uh, I think I was the number one advocate of putting up multiple boxes. Since then, uh, I've learned of, of the inherent issues that have been brought to bear in that we're in court over uh, the footage from uh, uh, continuous footage of the box. Uh, I think I've been there three times over it now. You've probably been there three other times before me and Megan. Uh, it seems to be a concerted effort across the Commonwealth surrounding those boxes. Uh, but it, it, it's uh, it's one of those things you should watch. We should watch uh, for the Commonwealth and what the legality says. But I would not be opposed to more boxes. I think it'd be a little foolish for them to do so and to buy some now, knowing uh, that there's so much litigation about it. Uh, I also feel that you, at the same time, uh, the election in uh, integrity grant is going to run out, and while we still have money there, I think they, I don't think that it would be beyond the pale, and I think it would even be prudent. Uh, to uh, consider the cost of those boxes and maybe even order a couple. Uh, while, while the Commonwealth is still paying for it on their dime. Uh, and so that's certainly a discussion that the board as a whole should have going forward. 
to do pros and cons. I think the same thing is going to get settled here today. Unless there's anything else about it. Uh, yeah, and I, uh, and I think that I'm glad you brought that up. We should have more discussion. I did see the letter from Kyle, but uh, we should move on to the first round of finance. So I'll call for adjournment. No one. All right. Call the uh, finance committee meeting to order. Second, please.